All right, so here's another question type. Uh, it's the calculated simple question type. We're going to go into calculated simple here. Um, question name, again, this is something that students don't see. So I'm just going to type in something like um, density of a rectangular prism. Okay. I've already uh, typed the question once, uh, so actually I uh, found this on a worksheet maybe. Uh, I can copy and paste this. Now notice it's got very specific parameters. Um, I don't want it to have very specific parameters. I want each student who gets this to have a different question. Uh, essentially the way I can do this is by using variables. Uh, variables within this question need to be placed in brackets. Okay? They need to be in, uh, defined by putting these curly Q brackets and I'm going to put in um, M for mass. Uh, that way I can remember that it's an M. Uh, and we're going to have three different other variables also, the height, the width, and the length. Uh, now it doesn't really matter which one's with which here. Um, so I'm going to mark one H, I'm going to mark one as a W, and I'm going to mark one as a length. Okay. Um, so I've got an M, an H, a W, and an L. Uh, general feedback. So students who get this question need to get some feedback. Uh, the feedback is going to be something pretty simple like remember density is um, calculated as mass divided by volume, mass over volume. Um, also they're going to need to also remember, remember volume is calculated as length times width times height. Okay, that way they've got those things. Uh, so I get a formula here to play, put in my answer. Uh, the answer is going to be the, uh, it's going to be the mass divided by the quantity um, length times width times height. Okay, uh, the grade on this will give 100%. Uh, we are going to format this so that we can give an answer in sig figs. Uh, and I think that the, uh, the I think based on the worksheet problems, it looked like all of the, well, you know what, I'm going to make it three sig figs, because most measurements that we make are going to have two digits past the decimal uh, and one digit in front. As far as unit handling, I can click on that. Uh, we do want the units to be given, and they will be graded, so I'm going to click that. Uh, we usually leave the unit penalty as a tenth if they get it wrong. So if they're doing the math right, they're getting most of the points. Uh, so as far as the units are concerned, the correct units on this should be grams per centimeter cubed. Um, there's no way to put a superscript in here, so the students should realize that. We can add that here. Note, uh, units, cubic, cubic units can be written as centimeters cubed, like that, um, because they're not going to be able to do a superscript. Um, do we want more units? Yes, we do, because we know that our students understand that uh, grams per milliliter is the same thing, a uh, multiplier of one. Now, the correct way to write it is lowercase m, capital L, not lowercase m, lowercase L. So we're not going to allow for the other one. The units are very, very specific. Matter of fact, they're so specific that if I put a space here, and the students don't put a space, they're going to get the units wrong. So I'm just going to delete that. Um, multiple tries again is something that we're not playing with, but now I want to find the questions, the wildcards. That's what Moodle is calling the variables. So if I scroll back down here, uh, what it's found If I click this wildcard parameters to set the mass, what do I want the masses to be? Well, I'm going to say that we're using a tenth point balance, so leave the decimal point at one place. 
uh, anywhere between 1 and 10, um, that's going to limit my sig figs to only 2. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say anywhere between 10 and 50 um, as the masses. That way I'm assured that I have 3 sig figs. Uh, decimal places for measurements should have 2 if they're doing it in centimeters properly. Uh, so 1 between 10 sounds good. Uh, two, say, 2 digits past the, past the decimal again and two digits past the decimal again for length, width, and height. Now notice I don't really feel much of a need to change any of these beyond the 1 to 10. You know what, the height I'm going to say this is a fairly tall cube, so I'm going to change that for between 10 and 20. Um, I want to generate how many values. Um, I've been doing 90 to 100, let's do 100 here. And we want it to display several so that we can just do a quick double check and make sure that they look right. Uh, we hit the generate button, not the display button, and we wait patiently for a moment. And then we just kind of scroll down, uh, and it will show us. If we click wildcard values, it will show us what it came up with. Came up with a mass of 41.7, came up with a length, a width, and a height. Uh, it did the math for us and got, oh, got an answer that's fairly small. Now I need to ask myself, do I really want my students to get something like this as, uh, as an answer? Because it's a relatively small answer. Um, I'm thinking that I want to actually change my parameters a little bit. I'm going to change it so that the maximum range of values between 100 and 1,000. Uh, let's make it 300 and 1,000. And let's uh, generate 100 new sets of values. And when I come down here, I'm getting some more reasonable densities. So that density before was extremely light. Um, this seems reasonable. It's a little bit more dense than water. That's more dense than water. So the, these seem like that they're solids, solids that are definitely going to sink. Uh, and here we've got, a, we've got a solid that is not going to sink in water. It's actually going to float. So it seems like the, we've got some reasonable values. Uh, if I do the math on my calculator just to double check, I should get at least one of these right. Uh, and I can click Save Changes.